Hey, in this video we're going to go over how to install the handle assembly and the first thing to decide is what type of fishing rod you're going to build, either spinning or casting. And then from there you have a couple of options, one being material, by far the two most popular is either cork or EVA, and then you have to decide on the rear grip, full or a split rear grip, and that's pretty much it for the options. Right, so once you've made the decisions, there's a couple key pieces of equipment that you need to get the job done. The first being a reamer. The reamer is actually going to increase the diameter of those grips so they can be mounted on the rod blank. The second being a form of epoxy. We've got some two-part propase rod epoxy here. We need a, something to mix the epoxy on and a couple of stir sticks and you're ready to go. Well, let's build a handle assembly. Let's go. So the first step to building our handle is going to be to lay out our components. So what we'll want to do is actually make a mark on our rod blank where each individual component ends. This is essentially creating a road map for us to use later on when we're ready to install the rear grip, the reel seat, and the foregrip. For a full grip portion, we're going to make a mark at the top of our rear grip, the top of our reel seat, and the top of our foregrip. For a split grip section, we'll be making a mark at the top of our fighting butt, at the rear of our rear grip, the back of the reel seat, the front of the reel seat, and the front of the foregrip. We're working with an EVA split grip material right now, and unlike cork, EVA is actually a foam material, so it's flexible and will actually stretch to fit the diameter of a rod blank. What's most important about EVA when installing it is that your inside diameter is not too large for the blank you're working with. Now if you've ordered one of our kits, we've already taken the time to measure out and put the appropriate diameter grips in there for you. If you remember earlier, we made our road map, so when we're actually dry fitting these grips, you want them to stop short of where you actually need to install them. If they're too large, they'll go past where we need them mounted, and they won't actually adhere properly to the blank. So the key is to have it stop just short of where you need to fit it, and when we're ready to epoxy it, we'll actually be able to press those right into place and be ready to go. When you're ready to mount your components of your handle to your rod blank, we recommend using Propaste two-part epoxy. Propaste is specifically designed for rod builders and the construction of rod handles. What you need is an equal part of the resin and the hardener, which we've already taken the time to lay out on our dish here. Once we're ready to start mixing, simply fold both components together, stirring and changing directions every so often until you have a uniform color. After mixing thoroughly, you're ready to apply to your rod blank and start mounting your handle. So we've test fitted our grips, we've mixed our epoxy, so now we're actually ready to mount these EVA grips to our rod blank. So first I'm going to start with our fighting butt. Now this is a sealed in fighting butt, so what I'm actually going to do is lay some epoxy down inside the inner diameter of it and press it into place. So taking some of my propase, which we mixed earlier, I'm going to insert some into the hole of the fighting butt, swirl it around to make sure a nice even coat on the inside, then press it over the rear diameter of the blank, twisting the rod blank as I go, sliding it in place. Now before I mount my rear grip, I need to slide my winding checks down the rod blank. If you were to mount your rear grip first, you obviously wouldn't be able to get these into their place, so it's important to remember this key step. So sliding from the tip down to the fighting butt, I'm going to press these into place firmly up against the edge of the EVA. Now during this process, you may actually get some overflow of the epoxy. So using a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol, you can clean away any excess epoxy you may have and remove any residue in that process as well. So I've got my first winding check in place. I'm going to go ahead and slide my second one down now. That's going to sit right in front of the rear grip. So again, I'm using the marks that I made earlier as my road map so I can know that this is exactly where that winding check needs to be mounted. So once I'm ready to install the rear grip, I'm going to slide it in place until it fits snugly on the blank and won't go down any further. Once I have it in place, I'm going to take some of my pro paste and actually apply it and spread it up until the point where the grip stops on the rod blank. You want to coat the blank 360 degrees with the pro paste so that everything gets adhered properly 100% around the grip itself. So once it's ready to go, 
take your grip and actually rotate it as you slide it down into place. Press it up against the winding check that you previously installed, and again, use that paper towel with some of that isopropyl alcohol to remove the excess glue that may have accumulated at the end of the grip. We've successfully installed our EVA split grip and we'll be ready to move on to our real seat installation shortly. So quick word on reamers, and there's basically two kinds that you'll encounter. One is the extreme reamer, and the other being the grit reamer. Now, although they have their place, they will work on the MHX wind grips, the carbon fiber grips, EVA, and cork. With the extreme reamer, it's kind of your starting point. They're tapered to mimic the rod blank taper, and they're really used to move a lot of material quickly. Right, so you just get in there and you go from one size and get larger the more material you have to take out. To save some time and fatigue, you can also uh, chuck it up to a power drill and that'll make quick work of it. Where the extreme reamer excels is going back in and doing some fine finishing on your reaming. So you notice I'm not forcing it in because that'll just peel the grid off. So you want to go in and just take out the inside material. A lot of times when you're working with full length, the outside ends will not be touching the blank, but the grip actually still won't fit. That's when you want to get the grit reamer and just take some of those knuckles out and you know do a little, make sure you tap out the inside, and then once you get a fit, you're ready to epoxy.